Welcome back to the garage. Um, today I am going to be uh, rebuilding this old uh, wheel. This is a rear wheel off a mid 80s uh, Raleigh Mountain Tour mountain bike. Um, the reason I'm doing this is uh, because this is actually an old uh, 650B mountain bike. So this is a modern 27 and a half inch wheel. Uh, most people don't know that this was a wheel size that was available with mountain bikes way back when. Uh, actually, Tom Ritchie had experimented with building a few uh, 27 and a half inch wheeled mountain bikes like in the late 70s, early 80s, uh, when Raleigh first got into the mountain bike scene in 1985. They ran this size. Um, but I thought I'd just do a little tutorial on how to do a triple cross uh, wheeled bill. So first thing is getting rid of old spokes and ordering new spokes. Uh, you can go online and get a spoke calculator to make sure you get the right size. Uh, which is important because if they're too short, you can't lace up the wheel, and if they're too long, you'll run out of threads and won't be able to tighten it down all the way. So use a spoke calculator. Uh, you can just Google it, and um, there are some that even have uh, measurements for existing hubs and rims, and so you just punch in what you're going to use, and uh, that will work. Um, for this one, since this is an old wheel set, I actually just pulled an old spoke out and measured it to get the measurements. So uh, I'm going to get started here. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is uh, stick a spoke through every other hole in the hub. Um, I'm starting on the drive side. It doesn't really matter too much what side you start on. Um, but yeah, we're just starting with every other for now. There's lots of ways to lace a wheel. Um, I'm not a professional by any means, just kind of a hobbyist. Um, but I've done this several times and I know it works for me. There's probably professional wheel builders out there that will tell you I'm doing everything wrong. Okay, and then we need to find where uh, the stem goes through for the tube because that's where I base my counting off of. And that is right here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put the first spoke through this hole closest to the hole for the stem and just twist on that nipple part way. Now for this pattern we are then going to go in order and we're going to count four holes. So one, two, three, and it goes in the fourth. So there's three holes between spokes. We're just going to continue this. So, one, two, three, and here. And we're going to continue all the way around. Okay, so now that the first spokes are laced in, we will start doing the triple cross on the first half. Now, there's a lot of play in this, and we can rotate the hub this way or this way to take out the slack. Now, if I rotate it this way, here is where that opening is for the valve stem. If I do it this way, when I lay down my cross, uh, the spokes coming out on either side will be very uh, fairly parallel, so it's easy to get your pump in here. If I rotate it this way, the spokes will cross and it gives you less room to get your pump onto the stem. So we want to turn it this way when we do it. Um, and we also can go ahead and put the other half of the spokes 
through here. Okay, so I've put the rest of the spokes in. We've rotated my hub uh, so that uh, I don't cross right in front of my valve stem. We are going to then take um, the spoke just past this one. So this spoke here, and it's a triple cross. So we cross here, here, and then we actually go underneath this one to my middle position to put on the nipple. And then we're going to repeat that. So go to the next one, cross here, here, and then under into this position. Okay, get the next one, cross over, over, and then under to this middle hole. and so on. Okay, so the drive side of the hub is now laced with a triple cross on every spoke, and now we need to do the non-drive side. Now, I did this um, the way I did one spoke side at a time uh, for kind of tutorial purposes. Um, a lot of times it's easier to get your spokes in before you get to this point. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and lace in the first side, this side. Um, one thing about these spokes is they're fairly flexible. You don't need to worry about bending them just so long as you don't kink them. So I can bend them like this and get it through. So I'll just go ahead and lace up the one side. Now that I have half the spokes in on the non-drive side, we want to pick the first spoke to place. So again, here's our landmark with the um, opening for the valve stem. We want to follow this spoke all the way back. And if we come straight up, we find this spoke here. And we want to take that to this hole. And this is where we'll start. Then we'll go to the next spoke, which is this one. We're going to skip this one and go to this one. And we will follow this pattern all the way around, skipping a hole each time. So skip this one, go to this one. Okay, so now that these are laid out in the right pattern this side, I can start putting the spokes in through this way so that I can do my triple cross on this side. So the last of the spokes are in. Here's our reference point again. I'm now going to take this spoke here so that when I come over and do my cross, um, this spoke is fairly parallel to that one so that it's easy to get into the valve stem. So we go over, over, and then I need to go under this one and pull through. Next one we go over, over, and then under. Have to bend it a little, but like I said, they're flexible, it's not a big deal. I'm going right here. And I will 
we'll just follow that pattern the rest of the way around. Thing is now placed in the right pattern, but obviously it's not true. It's not tight. Uh, it's not dished because this is, you know, a rear wheel. So we have to make sure that these spokes lay flatter than these to make room for the cassette, or in this case, uh, the free wheel. Um, there are different ways you can do it. Obviously, the best way is with a really nice truing stand, but if you don't want to drop 300 bucks for a Park Tools truing stand, you can do like I did and just get an inexpensive one off of Amazon. Uh, also, when I first started doing this, I'd just do it right on the bike. Uh, I would use the rim brake as kind of my guide to get it true, get everything tightened down. Okay, so now that it's in the truing stand, we want to make sure that the hub is centered to the rim, that the rim is dished so that it lays in the center between um, the seat stays, so it's centered to the bike which means it's not centered to the hub. Um, and so to do this, you kind of need to go slow. Again, I use that opening for the uh, valve stem, which is right here. So you can see that. Uh, but we just want to take little quarter turns to start tightening. But we do need a good starting point for all these nipples. So I like to uh, rotate them until they're about flush to my screwdriver um, as a starting point if possible. Otherwise, I do it according to uh, how deep it is past the threads on the spoke. Okay, so I've tightened the spokes so they're fairly uniformly tightened. And then I use this, this piece here to just see that it's close. It doesn't have to be perfect at this stage. Um, but I should be able to give that a, a spin and see that it's at least in the ballpark. And you know, this is a more than a 30 year old still rim that's bent up. It's not going to be perfect. I'm doing it to restore a vintage bike. Um, but at this point it's, it's good enough uh, that I can start tightening things down in order to dish it towards the drive side. At this point I will use my spoke wrench and I always start at the same spot. So I'm only going to be tightening uh, the spokes on the drive side in order to uh, bring the rim that direction. And you just want to get these tightened up. We're just doing small turns at a time as we go around. So now I've tightened up the uh, spokes just on the drive side. Um, it's the hub's fairly centered so I don't have much wheel hop this way at all. Uh, there's still some left to right wobble. So now that this is dished I want to keep this rim totally centered. So I'm going to count threads here and just narrow these in to make sure that um, it's not going side to side too much and I can just tighten accordingly uh, the rest of the way. Um, once the non-drive side gets the nipples tensioned fairly ev evenly and I do the fine tune adjustments, it's maybe a quarter turn at the most per nipple to get it tensioned and, and perfectly aligned. I've been uh, tightening these spokes down a little bit at a time, going all the way around, side to side, getting it real even, and it's pretty close. It's in a good spot. Um, so now the next point to get this wheel uh, ready to go, it, this seems a little unconventional, but the first time you take a new wheel out and get it on the trail, um, you can easily knock it out of true again. So this seems a little odd, a little unconventional, but you want to put it on the ground and actually stand on 
the spokes and kind of they'll they'll take this abuse it's not going to hurt it but what we're doing is loosening the spokes again giving them a little stretch taking them out of true and then i can true it again even tighter getting it real straight and then it doesn't come out of true the first time i go out on the trail for a ride so yeah it seems weird but this really does work okay so after uh checking the spoke tension several times after making sure it's really true or at least as true as i can get um, this kind of beat up old 30 something year old rim i checked it on the bike uh, it looks good to go so the last step is to just put the rest of this back together That will do it. Make sure this is on here. Tight enough. So, anyhow, thanks for watching. I hope it's helpful. Uh, like, subscribe, and uh, hopefully, I'll start getting some more videos out. Thanks.